The theory of parallel worlds has been discussed in the scientific community for a very long time. Unfortunately, we're not developed enough yet to prove or disprove it. But it's still an interesting theory, and that's why we have a lot of unusual urban legends about the guests from a parallel reality, according to many. Let's check out a few of them. A man from a non-existent country. This story took place in 1851 in a small German village, Frankfurt an der Oder. A lost man came out to the local villagers asking for help. The man introduced himself as Jopar Voren. He spoke very poor German and had a very strong accent. The man himself claimed that he speaks Laxar and Abram, languages that don't actually exist on our earth. He claimed to be from Laxaria, a country on the mainland called Sacria, separated from Europe by a huge ocean. However, none of these places existed on the Earth's map. People sent Yopar to the local authorities. He talked to a psychiatrist, but the doctor concluded that the man was totally sane. An investigation by the local police also revealed nothing suspicious about him. Yopar Voren claimed that the purpose of his visit to Europe was to find his long-lost brother. He survived a shipwreck and found himself near the village. They showed him a map of the world and a globe and asked him to indicate the place where he crashed, but he didn't recognize anything familiar. He seemed to have extensive knowledge about his homeworld. Yopar named five main continents on it, Sakria, Aflar, Ostar, Auslar, and Uplar. His story was considered plausible. Scientists from Frankfurt decided to send the man to Berlin for further research. However, during the trip, he had something like a seizure. The man suddenly jumped out of the carriage and disappeared into the surrounding forest. Despite a long and thorough search, no traces of Jopar were found. He seemed to have disappeared as mysteriously as he had appeared. Inspector Leboeuf, who was assigned to escort him to Berlin, thought this man could be a being from another world and that he had returned from where he had come from. A lot of weird incidents have happened in the mysterious valley of Haizu ever since the 1950s. People even started comparing it to the infamous Bermuda Triangle. But are they really that similar? It all started when an airplane went missing here under circumstances no one can explain yet. They searched the location back and forth, but nothing appeared to have remained of the aircraft. And guess what? No one received any SOS messages from the team on board. And to top it off, the same year, a considerable number of tourists and local residents were lost here in the valley, never to be seen again. Speaking of the Bermuda Triangle, one can link its origin story to a series of mysterious disappearances of ships and aircraft. Like the one that happened in 1945, when five planes and 14 people on board went missing in this location while doing routine training exercises. Even a thorough investigation didn't help to establish the cause of the incident. But that wasn't the end. Between 1945 and the mid-1980s, another 25 small planes went missing while going through the Bermuda Triangle, never to be seen again. And the search parties haven't recovered a single piece of these aircraft. The Bermuda Triangle isn't the only stretch of water that has claimed ships for good. In the Pacific Ocean, near Japan, there's a tricky portion of water that has earned the nickname the Devil's Sea. The best known out of all of these disappearances is that of a fishery patrol vessel that went missing in 1953. On board were 31 crew members and scientists who were looking to investigate a recently formed volcanic island. What happened to this ship and all the people on board? We'll never know, I guess, since they never found the ship or the crew members, and there was literally no trace of them left behind. Back in 1911, a standard train was scheduled to depart from a railway station in Rome, hoping to reach the city of Milan. Needless to say, none of the 106 passengers ever made it to the destination, and no one has ever seen them again. What happened to these people and to their train? Were they really lost forever? Some people seem to believe this isn't the case. As it was completing its journey, the train was supposed to pass through a long tunnel. It did enter it, but never came out the other end of the tunnel. Nothing was left of the train, and it seemed like it literally just vanished into thin air. 
Only two of the passengers were found, but they were quite unwell at the time, and their stories did not seem to make much sense. They spoke of a dense fog that they simply jumped out of because they got so scared. Fifteen years later, a story spread about a group of 104 Italian people that popped up in Mexico City, claiming they had arrived by train from Rome. If that's not weird enough, the story appears to have been reported back in 1845. 66 years before the train even departed in the first place. Of course, nobody at the time actually took these people seriously. But you can't help but wonder, did they actually time travel via the Roman tunnel? Or is it just another urban myth? What do you think? Lady on Highway 167 This incident happened on October 20th, 1969. It was first reported in 1988 in the magazine Strange. The article tells about two men, L.C. and his business partner, Charlie. The names are fictitious. One afternoon, L.C. and Charlie were driving along Highway 167 in southwest Louisiana. Discussing work, they drove toward the oil center of Lafayette. The highway was empty at first, but then the men noticed a very old and very slow car ahead. The men started discussing this mysterious car. Such cars hadn't been produced for several decades, but this one looked quite new. The men thought it was thanks to the owner's care and admired it. They slowed down to get a better look at the car. L.C. noticed a bright orange sign on it that said 1940. They saw a driver. It was a young woman in old-fashioned clothes, a hat with a long feather and a fur coat, even though it was warm outside. There was a child next to her, also dressed in a warm coat and a hat. L.C. and Charlie wanted to talk to her, but then they noticed the expression on her face. The woman was looking around in panic, almost on the verge of crying. L.C. called out to her and asked if she needed help. She nodded, and he gestured for her to park on the side of the road. But when the men also parked, they suddenly noticed that the woman's car had disappeared. They looked around the highway in shock, She couldn't have gone somewhere far so fast, but the car was nowhere to be found. After some time, another man drove up to L.C. and Charlie. He saw everything that happened and claimed that the car had simply disappeared. The men talked about the incident for several hours. When they reached the city, they contacted the police. However, the police couldn't help them in any way. Apart from their words, there was no confirmation of the existence of the car. The case was discussed for a while in local newspapers, and then was forgotten. The Lost Colony is the story of a strange phenomenon that happened back in the late 1500s. A group of people from England had moved into a colony on Roanoke Island off the coast of present-day North Carolina. But they soon realized they didn't have enough supplies. To fix this, the colony's governor decided to head back to England to get some. He didn't manage to come back for another three years. When he finally did, he was astonished at what was left behind. Nothing. The entire population of the colony was gone. The only reminder of what had been there was a single word carved into a tree. To this day, nobody knows what might have happened to these people or what the carved word means. A lighthouse without an operator? You might think that can't possibly be true, but hear me out. Located in the northwestern part of Scotland are the Flannan Isles. There's nothing fancy about them since they're nothing more than a bunch of rocks and grass. But there is a famous lighthouse here hiding a dark secret. In 1900, all three of the lighthouse's keepers mysteriously disappeared, never to be seen again. Ever since, the islands have been completely abandoned. The lighthouse became one of those with an automated system in the 1970s. No list of places where things go missing could be complete without this mysterious forest located in Transylvania, a region in Romania. And no, it has nothing to do with the famous Count Dracula, if that's what you're thinking. It's called the Hoya Forest, and it's a place that has seen quite its share of unusual phenomena. Not only do people go missing here, but others have experienced all sorts of weird noises, from female voices to whispers. Some people claim to have time-traveled between the spooky trees of the Hoya Forest. They say they had literally skipped a few hours before they went back. 
The Yellowhead Highway is a stretch of road located in British Columbia, Canada. One section of the road has received a lot of attention throughout the years, starting with the 1960s because of some mysterious disappearances. These events have earned it the nickname Highway of Tears. There is no reasonable explanation as to why people keep going missing here. What is more striking is that most of these people were young women. This triangular area that stretches above the desert and the Sierra Nevada mountains in the state of Nevada received quite a bit of attention because of a disappearance that happened back in 2007. A record-setting sailor, aviator, and adventurer named Steve Fawcett flew here in a small plane and then disappeared. They searched for Fawcett intensively for months, but didn't find any traces of him or the aircraft. One year later, the mystery of Fawcett's fate was finally solved when a hiker came across his ID cards, and later a search party found the plane's wreckage. It's one of the most visited natural resorts in the world, but Yosemite National Park carries some dark secrets of its own. Despite its beauty and abundance of wildlife, a total of 45 people went missing right here in this location. No one knows what happened to them. Hey, maybe we should ask the local bears. They might know something. There are even stories of people that disappeared from one region of the park only to pop up in a completely different location. This hasn't stopped over 3 million people that visit the park each year from wandering around this location, though. Whenever a ship happens to sink, you'd expect to at least find pieces of it on the bottom of the sea, right? Well, not if you're traveling through Lake Superior. It's located along the border of the United States and Canada and became famous because of the great number of ships that went missing here. It may have something to do with the stormy winds, of course, but that doesn't explain why some ships simply vanish altogether, without a single piece of them ever to be found, not even at the bottom of the lake. It does gather a lot of tourists each year, though. They come here to scuba dive and see the remains of some of the ships that still lie here. The bottom of this lake even contains what's left of the notorious SS Edmund Fitzgerald. Back when it departed on June 7, 1958, it was the largest ship on North America's Great Lakes and, to this day, remains the largest ship ever to have sunk in the area. Similar to other events, the exact cause of the shipwreck remains a mystery. The voyage started just like any other. The cargo ship SS Cotopaxi is making another journey to Havana, Cuba to deliver coal. It's November 29, 1925. For Captain Meyer and his crew, leaving Charleston Port, South Carolina, it will be the last trip the ship ever makes. Its route ran through the Bermuda Triangle. Two days into the trip, the Cotopaxi sent out a distress signal. It had got caught up in a strong tropical storm and turned over on its side. The wind was very strong and there was powerful lightning as well. Rain gradually filled the ship's hold. Then there was a bright white flash and the ship disappeared without a trace. Later, its wreckage was found in the Gobi Desert, which is in a completely different part of the world. All 32 crew members, including the captain, were missing. Of course, the part about the Gobi Desert is fictional. For one of his movies, Steven Spielberg came up with the idea that the ship was moved there by aliens. Still, in real life, the ship was never found, and its crew really did disappear. It was officially declared missing a month afterward, and nobody could find the wreck. It seems like a classic case of mysterious things going on in the Bermuda Triangle. But most mysteries are solved sooner or later. In 2020, the Cotopaxi was found. A man named Michael Barnett had moved to Florida to study shipwrecks off the coast. One wreck in particular really caught his attention. It was much larger than the others, and the locals called it the Bear Wreck. It was about 40 miles from St. Augustine in northern Florida. But no one had ever managed to identify the rusty hull. So Michael started to do some detective work. He measured the size of the shipwreck and started working through all the information he could find. He researched hundreds of old newspapers, leafed through insurance records, and looked at artifacts found on the wreck. 
After hundreds of hours of hard work, Michael was sure it was the Cotopaxi. But a few years before, there had been a rumor that the same ship had been found off the coast of Cuba. The Coast Guard found the wreck of a cargo ship about the same size that looked a lot like the one lost in 1925. Michael was sure they were wrong, so he teamed up with some science journalists and kept investigating. Soon, they discovered something that seemed to confirm Michael's belief. Divers found brass valves with the letters SV on them in the wreckage of the ship. Michael suggested these initials referred to Scott Valve Manufacturing Company. The headquarters of this company was in Michigan, not far from where the Cotopaxi had been built. The company had probably supplied parts for the Cotopaxi. So the puzzle seemed to be solved. The bear wreck was really the missing cargo ship. But Michael still needed to work out why the ship had sunk. Did something mysterious really happen to the Cotopaxi in the Bermuda Triangle? Later, Michael found the testimony of the ship's carpenter among some old papers. The carpenter claimed that the hatches covering the coal on the ship had been in a terrible condition before it sank. Repair work on the covers wasn't finished before the crew got the order to sail to Cuba. So if the hatch covers were still broken during the trip, water could have easily gotten on board. This water probably flooded the hole during the tropical storm. This was the real reason why the Cotopaxi went down. There was really nothing mysterious about it. It was just a mistake made by ordinary people. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.